morning. Welcome to Madison Avenue Baptist Church's online service. My name is Heather Ketchum. I am the assistant minister here at Madison. and It is my joy and honor to welcome you this morning. This morning we are celebrating. We are celebrating Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all those dads, those fathers, those dad figures and father figures in our lives. We are so grateful for you and the impact you have had on us is tremendous. Um, so we thank you. Today we celebrate you and we hope you feel loved and celebrated because um, you mean so much to us. So happy Father's Day. With kind of along those lines, today we have Father Edward Beck joining us. Yes, very excited. Um, for those of you who don't know, Father Beck is a very well-known religious commentator. You might have seen him on CNN. He's also an author of several books. He wrote a play. Um, he has done jail and prison ministry and chaplaincy. He's done like a lot of really cool things and I'm super excited to, that he is joining us for service this morning. So um, we will be hearing from him um, in the sermon. He'll be doing a gospel reading and, and our benediction. So very excited. We also have our fantastic MABC choir um, and put, on, put together by Paul Stefan, our minister of music. Some fantastic, beautiful songs coming um, to lead us into worship today. We have some really cool um, people bringing us our call to worship, our scripture reading, our um, offertory, other different parts of, of the service. And um, also we have our video editor, Travis Dover, who we are all grateful for. So it, it is really a communal, um, a communal service today. So very excited um, to, to jump into worship. Uh, we have a couple of announcements. So some of our routine things that we're doing week by week here at Madison, um, we have our midweek check-in on Wednesdays. So noon on Wednesdays, 12 to 12 15. So super short. You just jump on zoom. You say hi, we chat, and then we say a prayer together and that's it. Just a quick check-in saying, you know, hello and having a brief, uh, moment of community of being in community, uh, to break up the week. Next, we have our five minute virus free Fridays. Susan um, has put together these fantastic five minute short videos of reflections and um, just like straight wisdom. And so I hope that you are checking in, um, checking those out on our YouTube page on Fridays. Uh, every week, new one will pop up and they're fantastic. So please do check those out. And then our weekly worship. So here you are, 11 a.m. Fantastic, very excited um, that you are joining us at 10 a.m. We also have Bible study. Um, if you weren't able to join us this morning or and you're maybe curious about Bible study, we are starting a new series entitled The Ridiculous Journey. We'll hear from people like Brene Brown, uh, Rowan Williams, um, Nadia Boltz-Weber, let's see, uh, like a lot of really well-known um, um, thinkers and theologians. So it's, it's a fantastic series. I'm really excited for it. Uh, there's a, like short readings that you can do beforehand if you'd like, but not required. And then we, while we're in class, we watch a short video um, by some of these big names and then have a discussion and reflect and, and chat. Um, so really hope that you would, you would join us for that. We have some other cool things going on. Please be checking our e-blast. We have next week, uh, Pride Sunday, uh, Reverend Dr. Cheryl Dudley, one of our own, is going to be leading us in service. Um, we're very excited to celebrate Pride as, as a community and um, it's gonna be a fun service. So next week, Pride Sunday. We have um, the Community Ministries June Focus that was announced um, is the Trevor Project. So if you hadn't had a chance to check that out, please do. Um, info is in the e-blast for that. Um, yeah, we have yeah cool things going on. Check the e-blast for more details and any other events and stuff that come up. So with that, I think it's time for the passing of peace. Um, the passing of peace is the way that we start all of our services here at Madison. Um, it is a time of inviting and welcoming and affirming each other in community. And so this morning, um, as you pass the peace, I encourage you to reach out to someone around you. So um, someone maybe you work with or one of your friends or neighbors or, or your partner 
and pass them the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hello, Madison Avenue Baptist Church. It's Doug, your bass, singing at you from the basement in the Kips Bay neighborhood of Manhattan. And our entry today is number 63, How Majestic Is Your Name? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, we praise your name. O your name, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, O Lord God Almighty. Good morning, Madison Avenue Baptist Church. My name is Adam Crew, and I am pleased to bring the call to worship to you today. It is from a piece called On the Parables of the Mustard Seed by Denise Levertov. If you could bow your heads and pray with me. Whoever saw the mustard plant, wayside weed or tended crop, grow tall as a shrub, let alone a tree, a tree full of shade and nests and songs, acres of yellow, not a bird of the air in sight. No, he who knew the west wings brings the rain, the south brings the thunder, who walked the field past running his hand along the wheat stems to glean those intimate milky kernels, good to break on the tongue, was talking of miracle. The seed within us, so small we take it for worthless, a mustard seed, dust, nothing. Glib generations mistake the metaphor, not looking at fields and trees, not noticing paradox, mountains remain unmoved. Faith is rare. He must have been saying, prodigious, unique, one infinitesimal grain, divided like loaves and fishes. As if, from a mustard seed, a great shade tree drew, that rare, that strange, the kingdom of tree, a soul a bird, the great concourse of birds at home there, wings among yellow flowers, the waiting kingdom of faith, the seed waiting to be sown. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jenny Lindsay, your soprano. Please join in singing hymn 631, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thou 
Everybody, this is Richard Binder coming to you from ah, Proof. There it is. I have the pleasure of singing a truly joyful song for you this morning by Andrew Peterson. It shows that epiphanies can happen anywhere, even when you've lost your luggage at the airport. It's called Isn't It Love? Lost my luggage out in Kalamazoo The same way I tend to lose my conscience too Another day in these dirty old blues And I don't seem to mind This is a thing that confounds me You can find me, surround me, and remind me I lose my way and forget about you But you still remember me and isn't it love, this rain that falls on the sinners and the saints? Isn't it love, this well that won't run dry? When I think about that prodigal son, I've got a smile when I see that old man run. And I know that you love us the same, cause the sun came up today. Just as if we deserved it Just as if any one of us fools was worth it Truth is, we will never be perfect But you love us just the same And isn't it love This rain that falls on the sinners and the saints Isn't it love This well that won't run dry Isn't it love isn't it love, 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 love? Isn't it love to look down from the sky And see your only son on the cross asking why And somehow let him die that way And not call the whole thing off? All for this man in Kalamazoo Loses his bags and his way sometimes too But that was something you already knew And still you died for me Isn't it love? Isn't it love? Oh, isn't it love? This rain that falls on the sinners and the saints Isn't it love? This well that won't run dry Isn't it love? These mercies are made new every morning Isn't it love? Isn't it love? Oh, isn't it love? So let it rain. <laughs> Welcome to our time of prayer. This morning for our three-part prayer, I will begin by reading a, a prayer by Amy Petrie Shaw entitled, These Are Our Dads. Next, we will have a time where you're invited to offer up your own prayers. And then finally, we will close saying the Lord's Prayer together. Please join me in a posture of prayer. We recognize and honor today every dad who stood as their child 
shouted at them in anger or frustration. Every dad who tried to understand their child's clothing choices, new hairdo or new tattoo. Every dad who suddenly realized their child might be right and was willing to listen and every dad who honestly believed they were making the best choice that they could. We honor every dad who screwed it up, got it wrong, tried again, got it right, and often went from being the dumbest soul alive to the pinnacle of brilliance and back again in one day, according to his children. These are our dads. We honor and recognize today all those who taught us what they knew and forgave us when we got it wrong. Those who wanted to teach us but left too soon or simply did not know how to teach at all. Those who walk with us to the bathroom in the dark and those who turned on the lights and waited up for us to come back on our own those who let us break their binoculars and steal their shirts, and those who taught us why it was wrong to break and steal. These are our dads. We recognize and honor today all of the men who taught us what it meant to be honest, even when it was embarrassing to tell the truth and admit to our faults, to be human. We recognize too those fathers who could not teach us these things because they did not know themselves, but who hoped and prayed that we would do better than they ever did. These are our dads. Today we recognize and honor all of the men who have been there or tried to be there no matter what those who have remained calm in a crisis, and those who could not remain calm, but did not run away. Those who did run away, but came back again, and those who never came back, but always wished it could have been different. These, they are our dad, are our dads, excuse me, rich and poor, tall or short, slender as a pole or round as a basketball, they are the men who helped raise us and those who formed us through their actions and their lack of actions. They are our dads, birth fathers and adopted fathers, stepfathers and foster dads, fathers who have no children themselves, but who step in to help raise a child of a neighbor or a friend, grandfathers and uncles, single moms who have had to learn to go beyond motherhood, trans dads who have given birth, trans dads who didn't, queer dads and gay dads and female partners willing to take on the role. They are our dads. Through love and hatred, joy and tears, addiction, mental health issues, perfect health, sickness, aging, wealth and poverty, absence and presence, they are our dads. They are because of us. We are because of them. They are our dads. God, we reflect on our dads, our father figures in our lives. We know this day can be fraught with hurt, and struggle, ambivalence, and also be sown with love and joy and thankfulness. Thank you for our dads. I invite you to offer up your own prayers this morning.
God, sometimes we shy away from father language because we have varying relationships with our father, our earthly fathers. Today, we remember you are a loving father, a loving parent. Wherever we may be, whatever relationships we have with our fathers or father figures, we ask that we would feel and sense your parental love for us this morning. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Alex the Alto coming to you from the Bronx. Guess what? It's Father's Day. So to all the dads out there, whether you're biological, stepdad, adoptive dad, if you're putting dad jokes out into the world, you are making it a better place. So happy Father's Day. In the meantime, please join me here on Hymn 59. This is my father's world. Good morning, MAVC community. I'm George Lane, and I've been a member of this church since the year the Tony Award for Best Play went to A Man for All Seasons. I'm a native New Yorker, currently living in Chevy Chase, Maryland, and I'm the extremely proud father of my daughter Madison, a native Virginian, currently a theatrical stage manager living in the Heights. Whether you are a dad or are simply celebrating your dad today, I hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful Father's Day. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ezekiel, 
chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. These are the words of our Father. From the Gospel of Mark, Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Two men owned plots of land in the desert of the Middle East, yet both dreamed of being gardeners, but they were far-fetched dreams in this arid place. But one day they heard the master gardener was coming through on a caravan, and all of the people of the town gathered around. And the men said to this master gardener, can you teach us how to grow something in this arid place? And the master gardener said, if you have the desire, I can teach you, go to your homes. Well, the next day, the master gardener showed up at the home of the first man, and he said to him, do you wish me to teach you how to grow something in this arid place? And the man said, yes, more than anything else. He said, okay, wait for me. And he went away. And two days later, he came back and he said to the man, at the edge of the, your plot of land near the ground, you will see a wheel. Each day you must go and turn that wheel one revolution to the right and let go of all expectation. Well, the guy thought this was pretty unusual and kind of doubted that this was going to be a solution, but what choice did he have? He agreed. And so the master gardener left and each day the man would go back and turn the wheel one revolution to the right. And after a week, there was nothing, still the same dry, arid land. After 10 days, still nothing. And by the end of two weeks, the man gave up. He said, this is ridiculous. I'm wasting my time. It was a stupid plan. And he forgot to turn the wheel and he forgot the wheel was even there. Well, the master gardener showed up at the house of the second man and he said to him, do you wish me to teach you how you may grow something in this dry and arid place. And the man said, yes, more than anything else, that's what I want. He said, then wait for me. And he went away and two days later he came back and he said to the man, at the edge of your field, you will find a wheel close to the ground. And each day you must turn the wheel one revolution to the right and let go of all of your expectation. And again, the man thought it was kind of an unusual solution but he said, fine, I will do it. And each day the man would go and turn the wheel one revolution to the right. And after the first week, there was nothing dry, arid land. And at the end of the second week, there was still nothing dry, arid land. But as the third week began, there were little green shoots that began to sprout up in this dry and arid land. And by the end of that week, there were more shoots. And soon, by the end of the month, the garden had grown lush and bountiful. And all of the town people came back 
And they said to the man, what did you do here to make this garden grow in this arid place? He said, I really didn't do anything except what he told me. I turned the wheel once a day and I let go of all of my expectations. What neither men knew was that the master gardener had installed underground irrigation systems on both plots of land. And that when the wheel was turned, the water would be released and would water and nourish the dry parched earth. I think that spirituality and growth in the spiritual life is turning the wheel. And it's turning it even when we don't see the results or we doubt the results or we have our own arid, dry times when maybe we even doubt the existence of God or the, the power or mercy of God. And yet spiritual teachers tell us that spiritual practice and simply showing up can cultivate and fertilize the ground of our own lives so that that deeper connection begins to take hold and ultimately flowers in our lives. Today's readings, um, that first reading from the, the prophet Ezekiel about the cedar, you know, it says that you take the little sprout from the cedar and you plant it. And when it's planted and nourished, it becomes the largest of all the cedars. And then that wonderful gospel from Mark about the mustard seed. And by the way, Mark is the only evangelist who has the parable of the mustard seed. And he says, it's the smallest of all of the seeds, but when you water it and nourish it and tend to it, it grows into the biggest of all of the trees where all of the birds can come and make their home and have their rest. I can't tell you in my years of ministry and priesthood, how many people have said to me, well, you know, I left the church. Um, I stopped going to mass, stopped going to services. I kind of gave up on all of that. It, it wasn't doing anything. It was boring. I didn't like the priest or the minister. I didn't like the people. And, you know, that, that's fine. But often my question is then, well, what replaced it then? I mean, what is your spiritual practice? And some of them would kind of look at me, well, nothing really. And yet they hold on to the expectation that somehow it's going to visit them without them even showing up. You know, and I think, you know, just to take a walk in nature and to really notice um, is a spiritual endeavor and it, it changes us to perform corporal works of mercy. Um, th that love of God and love of neighbor integrated, as we're told, the greatest of all the commandments. It's a spiritual practice that that changes us. Um, I remember, you know, times in my own life when I entered the novitiate, you know, that's your first year in the monastery when I became a religious. I remember there was a period of almost seven months where I was awakened. It's the only way I can describe it in the middle of the night, about two in the morning. And I felt called to pray. And I would get dressed, put my habit on and I would go into the chapel and I would spend about an hour um, and I really didn't want to be there. Uh, I was tired the next day. And, and yet there was this, this almost this wooing by God that, that drew me to it. And then when that kind of ended, there was this long, like dark night of the soul, like period of seeming absence of God, you know, where I couldn't connect with God if I tried. And yet, I continued showing up, not in the middle of the night anymore. I mean, that ended, but showing up and not expecting any results. 
And slowly just the practice of attentiveness, of noticing, of caring for, of fertilizing, of watering, and of watching others who seem to have the secret of how to do it, the master gardeners, and paying attention not only to what they said, but what they did. And they flourished. And when I kind of modeled it and tried to, I found myself flourishing as well. You know, today is uh, Father's Day, and of course we're remembering our fathers. And so maybe it's appropriate that I be uh, ending this sermon with a story about my own father. My father was a New York City fireman, and then later a fire marshal, which meant he was the detective for the fire department and often had to investigate arson and arrest arsonists. And we lived in Brooklyn at the time. And I can remember I was about 13 years old and I was walking down Flatlands Avenue in Brooklyn past a coffee shop that my family often frequented. And as I'm passing, I notice a car parked outside with a woman and a couple of kids in it. And I look in the window of the coffee shop and I see my father and he's seated at a table with a guy I'd never seen before. And so I walked in to say hello to my father. And as I walked in, this guy that was sitting at the table with my father got up and walked out past me toward the car that was outside. And I sat down and I said, hey, dad, who is that? And my father didn't answer me. And I asked again, I said, hey, dad, who is that? And my father looked at his shoes. But, you know, I was like a dog with a bone. And I said, dad, who was that? And finally, my father looked up and he said, well, it's someone who I have to arrest at three o'clock. I said, arrest at three o'clock? I mean, this was doing serious damage to my magnum PI image of my father breaking down the door and slamming the cuffs on somebody. And in my snide way, I looked at him and I said, hey, dad, I hate to tell you, but you had him. He was here. And my father looked at me and he said, Edward, what did you want me to do? Arrest the guy in front of his wife and kids? And you know, my father's response that day passed on faith to me. It, it modeled something for me. It was a better way of responding, a better way of being. Um, he modeled compassion and I remember thinking even then, wow, this tough guy, how did he get to that place? Like what in him was cultivated to get there? Because I don't think it happened just by happenstance. I think you water it, you tend it, you model it, and it grows. So happy Father's Day to all of our fathers living and deceased who may have been models of that for us. And may today we continue with the commitment to allow our own gardens to flourish and to grow.
Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Hi, my name is Rodney Dunlap Keener, and my husband and I had, live in New Jersey and have been coming to the Madison Avenue Baptist Church for over 13 years. And currently, I serve as the co chair of the Media and Communications Board. If you would like to give to the ministries and beautiful community we have here, there are a few ways that you can do that. First, you can write a check and mail it to the church at 129 Madison Avenue in New York, New York, 10016. The address is also available on our church website at mabcnyc.org. Speaking of the website, you can find options there to give in other ways under the Get Involved tab on the menu bar. Or our handy MABC app has options to swipe and give. Now, if those options aren't easy enough, you can simply text MABCNYC to 77977 and follow the prompts. Thank you so much for your support, especially during this time of crisis. So while you write that check or swipe on your phone, please enjoy the beautiful offertory music. Good morning, Madison Avenue Baptist Church, and a happy Father's Day. My name is Brian Long, and I'm the resident baritone here in Long Island City. I am pleased this morning to bring you this wonderful old 19th century hymn with words by Washington Gladden and music by Henry Percy Smith. This is our very own Paul Stephan's arrangement of O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. O Master, let me walk with Thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me Thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the wayward feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way. Teach me thy patience still with thee in closer that triumphs over wrong in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way in peace that only thou canst give with Good morning, Madison Avenue Baptist Church family. It's Karen, your mezzo, with our final hymn, number 561. It is well with my soul. One peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea
buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my hopeless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin. Loving God, we thank you for this time to gather as a community of faith. We thank you for your living word, which indeed nourishes us and nourishes our souls and our lives. Help us to continue to plant the seeds, to make those choices in our lives that open the way to seeing in new ways and to allowing the gardens of our lives to continue to flourish. Amen.